we're doing. So, uh, yeah, I'm Gary. Um, I do a lot of link building and affiliate marketing. Uh, it'll be a lot easier to do this presentation when I've got my slides. It's a very visual presentation I've got going here. So, let's just get us up here and let's get rolling. We good? Cool. And it's that one. Not that one. That one. There we go. Cool. So, yeah, as I said, um, my name's Gary Wilson. I do a lot of link building at this point. Um, been doing SEO for about four years now and link building was something I actually um, began to specialize in. It actually came from a point when I was trying to save money for some clients I had and what I was doing is I was, you know, I was paying for a lot of links, I was using PBN and it was quite expensive so I wanted to essentially find a way of getting cheaper links and that really came from doing outreach so I'm going to talk a bit about that here but I'm going to more just going to dive in and uh, run this company called Get Me Links. Uh, this is where, um, you know, I sell a lot of links to using all of the methods that I've built up in the last few years. So. Um, for anyone who doesn't know, uh, I'd say some affiliate site I've done. So this is one I've worked on recently. It's been a couple of months, as you can see, I built a lot of links to this. Uh, it's getting close to you know, 5,000 uh, monthly organic traffic every single month. And I've also worked with you know, a lot of clients around the world. These are you know, Some of these are Fortune 500 companies, uh, huge businesses that are buying thousands and thousands of links across, uh, across the campaigns every year. So yeah, it's great to be a part of that. So for anyone who doesn't know, I don't want to insult anyone but I'm going to explain what a link actually is and why it's important so um, let's say you're reading an article and um, we're going to go to like Business Insider here um, I'm just reading for the article basically what a link is it's the clickable button that maybe goes to another website okay so as you can see in this article here as the UN that's on there so if you click that button it'll go to the UN's website and that's regarded as a link now, what Google does is they've got these little things called spiders, and it's a fancy word for what's essentially a bot. And this is how Google essentially builds up their index of sites. These little spiders actually find that web page and they click to other web pages. So Google follows through all the links and they're able to build an index of all the websites. That's why when you Google something, Google knows that there's a website, you know, John's blog down the road, because maybe they've had a link from a website that they found before. So this essentially built up Google's index. These spiders crawl around all over the place. I think Google's now got 130 trillion pages actually indexed, which is absolutely insane. And this has all came really from their spiders and crawling through all these links. Now, what Google actually does is when they're crawling through these links is they begin to attribute power to certain sites. So as Google's crawling through, they're going to notice that certain sites get more links from other sites than others, right? So in the example of the UN here, um, they've probably got links from huge publications uh, such as the BBC. They're probably on a lot of big sites. And essentially, Google's following through all these links and it knows that you know, there's thousands and thousands of websites that link to the UN. Therefore, Google gives that website more credit. Now, not all links are equal. If you get a link on the BBC or you get a link on, you know, my new blog, you're probably going to want the BBC link. So I'm going to talk a wee bit here about what the differences are in links and what Google's really looking for um, in terms of, um, you know, getting the, the best links for yourself so that you manipulate your campaigns. So why do links even matter? Well, you know, as, as I was saying there, essentially Google uses this as a scoring system as part of their algorithm. There's over maybe 100 factors that Google actually looks at. Some of it's to do with on-page, some of the stuff that, you know, Tom was talking about right design earlier, you know, social media. They'll look at a wide range of things to actually um, get an understanding of what your website's about. But one of the biggest things that they've used for years and one of the biggest things they've been climbing down on to get better and stop spam is links. It's one of the most difficult things to manipulate because you essentially need to be placed now on really good websites with high authority and they need to be relevant to. So there's essentially these two factors which really what, what I really focus on when I'm trying to um, build links um, and it comes down to authority and relevance. I'm going to talk about what that is here and so that you can build these kind of links yourself into your own campaigns for whatever kind of business it is you've got. So authority really more than simply comes down to um, how many links does the link that you're getting have, right? Um, essentially, say Google's following through all these links they are trying to understand how powerful different sites are and authority really just comes down to how credible that website is. So for example, you've got Forbes here and um, they're going to be regarded as super, super credible because they've got links from all over the place. There's going to be other big publications linked to Forbes, there'll be newspapers linking to Forbes, there'll be people's blogs linking to Forbes. A lot of people are linking into Forbes all over the world and therefore Google regards that site as an authority. 
So now if that site links to your new business, they're going to give you much more credit for that than maybe another link because it has a high level of authority. So when you're trying to build links, it's not just about getting placed in a website and it looks good. You have to maybe actually understand how authoritative these sites are. So what SEOs use to analyze this is uh, different metrics. Um, you know, some of them here are DAs, domain authority. It's a metric by Moz. And what, what these kind of tools do is these sites crawl websites just like Google is, and they try and get a picture of how how Google might view those sites based on how many links they have, how many links they can find themselves. And it's not an exact representation of what is actually the case, but it gives you a much closer indication as to maybe what sites better than others to get a link on. All right, there's DR, there's trust flow citation, but there's all sorts of different measures you can look at. I think SEMrush now are you know, doing a lot more website crawling. So there's a range of tools that you can use to actually analyze how authoritative the site is that you're getting. The next thing, uh, which is one of the bits I even see some of the most experienced SEOs mess up with, is relevance. And you know, relevance is extremely important because it's extremely unnatural to have links that are not relevant. And at a high level, a non-relevant link going to your website can actually damage it. So what I'm going to show you here, just to show you a wee example of a page we've got. Purina.co.uk here, it's a big um, blog um, to do with dogs and cats and all this stuff, it's, it's a pet site. And as you can see, I've got a blog post up here on dog breeds, okay? Now, imagine you own um, a website and this page was linking to you. And I'm gonna just run you through a few scenarios here and show you what would be a good scenario and what would be a bad one, all right? So you've got um, your, your links about dogs, so that Purina site, okay? And let's say your website's on Barbie dolls, all right? You've got a blog that talks about Barbie dolls, you know, uh, some of the best ones, Ken dolls, all that stuff. Um, really, it's kids' toys or, you know, people who like Barbie dolls that are maybe older. It's going to be um, non-relevant to dogs. So if you've got that link about a dog, although that's on a really big site that's got high authority, because it's linking to a Barbie doll site, Google's going to look at that and they're going to be like, why is a Barbie doll site getting a link from a dog? It's not the dog site. It's, like, it's not relevant. It's not, it's not related to what we're talking about here, right? So if you're building tons and tons of links that are not relevant, then it's not going to work. And this is why some of the older spamming methods that happened years ago don't work as well anymore because you were essentially just trying to get links on any site possible, just to the volume of links and authority of links rather than this, the link actually being about what the page is about. Um, so take this scenario, you've got maybe those dog links again and you're now like it's a cat site. Now, although dogs isn't related to cats, Google actually will give some credibility because they understand using latent thematic indexing. Fancy word, I'm sorry, but <laughs> I'm an SEO. But basically, they use uh, they, they basically know when words relate to each other, right? They understand that cats is related to dogs, which is related to pets, which is related to fish. Um, so if you relate dog to cat, that's still going to help you, but it's not going to help you as much as this scenario here. If you were linking your links about dogs to a dog website, that's going to be the ultimate best scenario. And that is where us as SEOs can actually get the best of results. If we've got a website, we want to try and get links that are precisely and exactly related to the, the, the site that we're trying to link to. We want to make sure the blog posts are about, on, on, the, on our links, we want to make sure the blog posts are about our website as much as possible. And better yet, we want to try and get links from domain names and websites that are about our target site, all right? So once you understand these two things, you can actually realize that you don't need a lot of links to rank, right? A lot of people, a lot of people, you know, get into SEO, you know, building links, you know, they ask me and they say, Gary, like, don't I need to spend a load of money to rank for this term? Well, you know, it depends on the term, of course, and it depends who's going for that and how much links those guys have. But you don't need a huge amount of links. If you can combine authority and relevance together and get the right stuff every single time, you'll actually find you don't need as much links as you think. Um, here's an example here where I just Googled um, best coffee grinder, I did this the other day. And what you'll see here is there's a couple of um, different websites ranking. You know, you've got the top one here, but it's 35,000 domains, right? So that's 35,000 websites. That's not even backlinks, because one website could be linking out four times. That's 35,000 domain names. Going to this top website, they're number one. Then we have a site here, the perfect grind. And they only have 63 referring domains, so 63 websites linked to them. And look who they're beating out. They're beating out a copy site with 709 domains, and they're beating out t3.com with 17,000 domains, right? They have 63, literally like a couple of percent of the domain names that the guys below them have. So you'd be thinking, well, how is that? They've got more domains. 
what's probably what you'll find is the links that this site has is much more relevant to that specific term than the other guys. And those other guys are huge sites, they're huge tech sites, and they're not winning. So people think, oh, it's a big term, I'm not gonna be able to rank for that. You can actually rank for those terms if you understand that you can build that confined relevance and power for that specific topic. Same here is another example in local. Joiners London, you got a similar thing, 4.5K at the top. I can have 20 free links underneath them. And look, 4,000 links almost on the, the guy below him. 66.7K, right? I can have 23 links. I mean, that's, that's a joke. The guy's literally smashing them out of the water, getting much more traffic than Yale down below because he's built that confined relevance. He's got a domain name on that specific thing and the links are about that specific topic. It'll be on joiner sites, it'll be on related sites, sites that yell to that specific page won't probably have. All right, so that's all fine and well, Gary, but <laughs> how do you get these super relevant and authority links? So this is what I've been trying to master for the last few years, and I'm gonna talk a little bit about it here. Um, so you basically got two options. Um, if you're you know, a business owner or an SEO, you're watching the links. Uh, you can either build them yourself or you can buy them. Uh, you can find someone, you know, vendor like me or you know, other vendors that sell links and you can go and buy them. Um, but you really need to, if you're going to do that, you need to understand what you're looking for and how to analyze the authority and relevance of the stuff you're buying. Um, so yeah, if you're going to do link building yourself, it's very much going to depend on the type of business you are. Um, successful companies who do their own link building have really remarkable and you know <laughs> smart strategies for their industry. Um, and one of the best Best ways to actually figure out um, figure out a good way to build links for your industry just to actually look at your competitors' link profile. You can use a range of tools to do that. And look at where they're getting links on. Um, you know, if we, you know, whatever kind of business it is you've got, there's going to be different sort of what links that will work well for that. There's going to be different places that you can get those authority and relevant links from. And it's really going to be niche specific if you're going to do that really well at scale. So, you know, take the example of like a local joiner again. Um, you know, there may be local groups that they that they maybe go to that have websites, could be good authority sites, and they're really relevant, they're in the area. There could be local newspapers, joiner associations that they could join and get on the website, industry meetups, local directories. So all of these kind of things are things that might not apply to another business, but would probably work really well for a joiner and could actually be absolutely free to get on. So you need to look at your own business and think, how the hell could I get some links for this? You know, what kind of business is I've got here? If we take the scenario maybe of the next guy, you know, let's say it's a tools review website. This is maybe like an Amazon affiliate site and we're selling stuff. It's going to be a completely different link building strategy that you're probably going to do for this business as compared to the joiner before, right? So skyscraper outreach, that essentially involves, um, it was coined to you know, by um, one of the courses in America, but basically what it is, is it's a, a method of outreaching to other blog posts which are similar to yours and trying to get placed on as an authority. So, you know, these kind of tool review sites involve writing a lot of content and you can use those sort of content pieces to essentially outreach to other content pieces and try and get placed on there for more links. Again, you can use tooling associations, tooling directories. So some of the, so some of the strategies could overlap with maybe the joiner. Um, but, you know, website sponsorships, these are kind of things you probably do on a bigger website. Donation links, these are kind of things you might do on a bigger website you might not do it for a local company. Um, because this is more general related to tools as the joiner is probably looking for some more local and hyper local stuff. All right. So, oh, Gary, I'm not that smart, you know, how, how, um, how am I going to figure out this for my own business? Well, there's a sort of blanket strategy which um, I pretty much built my business on, um, which could work really, really well no matter what kind of business you are, um, if you're a local business or you're working um, nationally. And that's called link building outreach. So it basically involves emailing other websites and just asking them for a link. It's very, very simple um, when it's put like that. But there's a lot to it. Um, so this is my essentially basic process for outreach. Um, I find first of all prospects and find targets. I then reach out to those people. I negotiate deals and I land links. And I repeat that time and time again for my own projects and for clients around the world. And that's it. And I just became really, really good at this one thing. And it actually allows you to kind of hit all the points that I said. It allows you to get really relevant sites, that can prospect the right kind of people. And it allows you to essentially metric filter those prospects to find the authority links, right? So I'm going to break this strategy a little more. So prospecting, um, 
essentially just finding a list of people that you can um, you can outreach to. So if you're on a budget, you can use a tool like Simple Serp Scraper, it's a free tool. Basically all you need to do in there is bang in some keywords and it will pull a list of sites. So what better place to find relevant targets to your industry than to Google search some of the keywords that you're maybe going after or things are related. So let's say I was trying to rank that tool site. I might start to Google things like um, sawing guides or, um, you know, Hammer, hammer websites or something like that. Different keywords where I'm going to get websites which are essentially related and in my industry, right? And what I do is I load up these keywords in a tool like this and it pulls in all the sites ranking for that. The guys that are ranking are probably going to have really good metrics and I can essentially outreach to those guys. So I get that list, a metric filled to them using a the tool like Ahrefs and then you can use this other tool called Hunter.io and essentially what that will do is it will look at all those targets you've got and it will pull in all the emails for those guys, right? So it saves me having to go in and click on the contact form page. It essentially scrapes and finds all the email addresses on those websites for you so that you don't have to. And there's a, there's a solution that I use. I mean, this is the kind of cheaper way of doing things. Um, if you're just starting out, I'd recommend you do this, what I just said there. Um, but if you're doing things at scale, you can use an enterprise solution like Pitchbox, which actually does all of this in the one tool. Um, Reaching out is the next bit. So once you've got a list of people you want to send emails to, um, you essentially need to find a way to you know get those emails out. And you probably don't want to like copy and paste the template in Gmail for for ten hours as you reach to a thousand people. So uh, you can use tool like Mailshake, really cheap, it's like thirty bucks a month. Uh, you can hook up an email account with that. I recommend you get like a G Suite email because a regular Gmail account will get banned very quickly if you're doing this. Um, use a G Suite account, load it up into Mailshake, and press send on a bunch of prospects, really, really simple. Again, Pitchbox does the same thing. It's more of an enterprise level solution if you're doing it at scale. So when you do this, you want to be really, really good with your numbers. And this is how I've been able to scale time and time again, because I understand that for every email I send, I'm going to get something back. So in the example here, if I send a thousand emails for a campaign, I know probably 90 to 920 people are going to get that email. I know that 680 people are going to open it. I know that 220 people are going to respond to that. And I know that I'm going to get 30 links from those thousand emails. So I know if I'm building, you know, 500, 1,000 links a month, I know exactly how many emails I probably need to send. And I can budget for that because I know here. I know the numbers, right? And these are actually the exact numbers that I um, <laughs> uh, use inside my um, I'm sorry, my link building service. So if you want to take these and try and beat me out some of the numbers, then be my guest over it. Um, but yeah, that's essentially um, essentially what I'm looking at when I'm trying to send out the emails. I want to see a funnel of how much responses I'm going to get, so that I'm not sending thousands and thousands of emails, um, and I just don't know how many links I'm going to get. We're getting too many replies back or whatever. Um, so the, the, the biggest and most difficult part of doing outreach successfully, and this is the bit that everyone gets stuck on, because everything else I just told you about is very systemizable, it's very simple once you get your head around it. The hardest bit is a much more holistic part of it where you have to essentially talk to people. <laughs> so you send that initial email out and the people start coming back with you know, responses which are just so different, there's, there's not like a, a predictable process to it. Negotiating, getting the best deal for your, for whatever it is you're trying to do, whatever kind of links it is you're trying to get, is one of the hardest bits. And one of the, you know, one of the greatest things um, that I essentially learned when I was doing this, it's exactly like sales. You know, like you have to um, just, Prospect as much as possible, send as many emails as you can, and to be very, very cutthroat in your negotiations because you know, probably half of the people that are going to get back to you are going to be absolutely crazy in what they ask for. Other guys come back to me with a little blog and they want like 25 grand for one link, like it's absolutely crazy. And um, a lot of the times, you know, you people will offer you prices, you can negotiate the prices if you want to pay. Maybe if you're just after completely free links, that's totally fine. You're just going to get less, less, less opportunities doing things that way. Um, and you can try and negotiate for free links. Um, some of the ways you can do things, of course, is you can, um, you know, you can outreach, say, you maybe want to add an article to their website, you're going to offer value and add value by giving them that article to their website. So there's lots of different tricks and sort of uh, methods you can use to actually get things for free um, and you don't have to pay. So once you do that, you just rinse and repeat the process and you'll be as happy as this woman that I pulled off the stock image site. So yeah, I appreciate you listening, guys. I hope that was insightful. 
I will be releasing a full blog post soon on my website, garywilson.com, where I'm actually going to be um, detailing uh, link, outreach link building much more depth. Uh, what I've actually done in there as well is I've done three videos where I've over the shoulder uh, actually built a link from scratch and showed you. I've actually built like a, it was like a DR60 on link completely from scratch. Um, I didn't pay a penny for it. And I've just shown you me doing that. Um, it took me, you know, a couple hours to shoot that. So something that you can replicate and something I think would offer a lot of value if you're trying to build some links. So I appreciate you listening. Thank you guys. Appreciate it.